composed of seven parts, the importance of Chinese custom, origin of Chinese custom, the developing this, uh, distinctive features, and the typical Chinese costumes, and the costumes of Chinese ethnic minorities, and the Chinese costumes and the Chinese expressions. Okay. Uh, you know, Chinese costumes plays so an important role in Chinese daily life. So, uh, so in today in China today, uh, people often say uh, 衣食住行, okay, uh, clothing, food, shelter, and transportation, uh, and place clothing on the top of this this list. Okay, and with developing of the society, clothes does not only to cover up one's embarrassment or prevent uh, one from the cold, but a symbol of beauty, uh, rank, ceremony, and the pre uh, priority, and the most important of all, the cultural career. And as one of the early civi uh, civilized nation in the world, uh, China also takes a closing lead in world history. Okay. Uh, and with the fast developing of silk, dye, and the textile industry, um, China once led by various clothes, textile, and uh, style designed in dress from uh, unlined long grow and a mandarin jacket worn by men to uh, skirts and to the characteristic qi pao, um, the mandarin grow for women. And in ancient time, the dress people wore uh, should, uh, could uh, e easily uh, tell the rank and the class he, they were in the or original uh, people, the ruling class, Di Wang, Jiang Xiang, kings and the princess, prince, generals and the mineral, and the ruled class, Nu Pu Zui Fan, the slaves and the criminals. Uh, did you guys remember uh, when we talk about uh, have the topic of colors? We have uh, many colors for different ranks. Did you remember that? Yes, no. Okay, great. Uh, okay, yes, uh, colors show the ranks and also uh, Ch uh, Chinese costumes show the ranks, okay. And here we will go to the origin of the Chinese costumes, okay. And in prim uh, primitive society, the, chi uh, the Chinese lived in caves. Mm -hmm. Uh, to keep it warm, they covered themselves with natural materials like leaves, uh, grass, grasses, and uh, animals' ferns. And about 18,000 years ago, the Chinese invented uh, sewing. Uh, animal skins then were cut to fit the human body with sharpened stone and uh, bone tools and then sewn together with bow needles. This picture is the bow needles. Okay. And from artifacts of Peking man, it was found that the bow needles was readily available and the invention of sewing allowed the early Chinese to make better clothes to pretend them from harsh conditions thus assisting them in their adaptability uh, and uh, consequently resulting in the expression of their uh, territories and an uh, increase in their productivities. And here uh, we will learn some uh, developing of the Chinese costumes. Uh, you know, traditional Chinese, Chinese costumes came through a long and a complex evolution process uh, along all the areas and the di uh, dynasties. From this picture, uh, you can see the developing of Chinese costumes in different uh, dynasty dynasties. And it also tells the trend of the change. Uh, it, became, it, it became more and more well-fitting 
and easier for uh, people to dress. Okay, you can see this is for men's costume, and the, the left part, the, the right part is for female. It's the about the re, uh, revolution, okay, uh, uh, evolution. And uh, now let's go through uh, costumes in different dynasties one by one. Okay. Uh, in Zhou Dynasty, Chinese rules of etiquette regarding costumes and uh, uh, adornments starting taking uh, shape in the Zhou Dynasty and uh, regulating from no, uh, nobles down to the commons. And uh, uh, as early as uh, the Zhou Dynasty, attire was already classified into sacrifice uh, attire court attire, army uniform, morning attire, and wedding attire. And during the spring and the, uh, autumn and the uh, warring state, uh, states period, different states you uh, used visual symbols such as clothing to display their state identity. Moreover, Different styles of clothing show different positions of and the origins of people. And in Qing Dynasty, Emperor Qin Shi Huang, after unified China, established many social systems and changed the style of costumes dramatically. Uh, influenced by the concept of yin and yang, as well as the theory of five elements, uh, Emperor Qin Shi Huang believed that the Qin Dynasty should subdue the Zhou Dynasty like water extinguishing fire. Since the color black was associated with water, it became their favorite and was believed to symbolize the power of water. So now uh, uh, you guys can know why uh, people in Qin Dynasty like to wear uh, black costumes right yes that's true. Okay, great and in Qing dynasty costumes and adornments were mostly of the color black the dark style dark style for clothing and the personal adornments con uh, con uh, continued till the western han dynasty and changed to red in early han dynasty because it was believed that Red display the Han Dynasty virtual. Okay. And the Chinese clothing developing uh, rapidly during the Wei, Jing, and the Southern and the Northern Dynasties. And sometimes, uh, sometime before 265, the cultural and the aesthetic view of the people in North and the South China merged. Uh, following the mass movement of the population caused by frequent wars. And the costume of this period was characterized by diversified <laughs> styles. Okay. And in general, it was cla uh, classified into two catalogs, the folk costumes and the official costumes. And the former was clothing fitting, round colored, and the vented, and the prototype for a new uh, st uh, style grow, which became popular after Tang Dynasty, and the latter was developing into uh, ceremonial attires, the former attire. Okay. And then in the Tang Dynasty, clothing were more varied than uh, before because the state was more open to the outside world. And the common man's clothing included a uh, toe, round colored and narrowed sleeve grow and, uh, and the boots. And the skirt uh, wearing was a fashion among women in the Tang Dynasty. And what, what's worth mentioned is that women did not have to abide by the traditional dress uh, dress code they were allowed to expose their arms in the back and wear dresses that absorbed elements from other culture 
and they could wear men's riding outfit if they like. And the clothing for women uh, in particular changed rapidly. Uh, when a new style appeared, many follows. Custom, customs in, uh, costume in the Song Dynasty was simple and natural, and the casual wear appearance during uh, this period. Moreover, during this period, uh, it became uh, fashionable for women uh, to bind their feet in order to keep them uh, feet small. You can see this picture. Women were thought to be more beautiful with their tiny feet, only three inches. Okay, well, we call it San Chun Jin Lian. Okay, the uh, the t the more t the the more tiny your feet is, the more beautiful you are. That's the uh, aesthetic. Uh, uh, the the the, be the beauty that at that time okay, and the foot biting is the customs of tidying biting the feet of young girls to prevent their future growth, and the foot biting um, became popular as a mean of displaying status and was correspondingly adopted as a symbol of beauty in Chinese uh, culture. But food binding make many women suffered from the lifelong disability. So Emperor Kangxi in the Qing Dynasty tried to uh, ban food uh, binding, but failed. But in the 18th uh, century, Chinese reformers changed the practice. But it was not until the early 20th century that the food binding began to die out. Okay. And during the Yuan Dynasty, the, uh, the Mongolia ethnic group known as the people on the horseback was in power and the, the simple and unadorned style of clothing in this dyna uh, dynasty was mainly a combination of Mongolia and Han influence. Okay. Uh, and the dramatic changes took place during the Ming Dynasty. There were no limitation to one style and the natural beauty was advocated, thus bring vigor and vitality to clothing culture. And the one outstanding feature of the costume in the Ming Dynasty was that the buttons in the uh, front replaced the banknotes in use for several thousand years, although the button came into being long before the Ming Dynasty. And another feature was that the garment's front was uh, decorated with various kinds of uh, striking adornments, gold, gold, jute, pearl, etc. And a special uh, adornment was a golden chain hung with a nipple, early pick, uh, or small knife, articles that were often used in people's daily life. And uh, during the Qing Dynasty, clothing began elegant and uh, post, and the people's hair styles changed greatly. After the Mantu people dominated China, people were uh, forced to accept their hairstyles, the Mantu cure. Uh, through, uh, though universally rejected by the Han dynasty nationalities at the beginning, it was later accepted as a custom. And there are some uh, strictly uh, stipulations about people's costume. Uh, it was stipulate that servants, actors, and uh, labels were forbidden to wear clothing and uh, adornments made of high-grade materials. And the men's costume mainly include long gloves and uh, mandrel jackets, and the sleeves ends and pro the horse hoof shape for the first time. And the structure of long grow was simple, 
with erect collar and a straight main body, Mandarin jacket was one of the four custom uh, costume of Manzhu men, namely uh, ceremonial robes, casual robes, uh, rain jackets, and the Mandarin uh, jackets. And the Mandarin jackets fell into several types. The you uh, the unlined a uh, single layer in inter in uh, interline and the coat uh, cotton and they they were usually azure dark pearl or black you can see this picture and the top grade mandarin jacket in the Qing dynasty was the yellow uh, mandarin jacket I think I have also mentioned this kind of yellow Mandarin jacket in the chapter of the Chinese color, right? Yes, and yes, yes. yeah, and it was the highest reward for the emperor, uh, and only uh, and uh, only four types of people were entitled to get it. Uh, for example, choose the uh, sub subordinate of the emperor, minister who present rare birds or based to the emperor or senior officials with great contribution to war uh, and the court uh, in while, okay. And in modern times, uh, influenced by Western customs, men uh, wore, wore top head, but still long gloves and mandrel jackets uh, clothes shoes or lesser shoes. Women wore reformed mandrel gloves. Uh, Chinese costume of the 20th century, century ranged greatly in style and including the uh, Chongshan or Qipao, Chinese tonic suit, a student uniform, a uh, Lenin style suit, Russian dress, mini skirt, uh, bankini, a uh, bank, t-shirt, etc. And uh, fashion designer today uh, are finding some new ways to freely combine modern fashion um, uh, aesthetics and uh, change with the traditional Chinese symbols. They have made a lot of eye-catching design for people's clo clothing. And today, uh, some people in China follow world fashion but the indiv uh, individually has become the uh, the main chain and the more and more people, uh, they can enjoy beautiful fashion with traditional features and modern chic. And for more information about the evolution of traditional Chinese dress, uh, here's the website. You can log in and, uh, log in and then find more information, okay? Okay, now let's come to the distinct features of the Chinese costumes. Uh, when it comes to the distinct uh, features of Chinese costume, the first one is using silk. Uh, as a Chinese invention, silk was produced and used only in China for a long period of time. And during the Tang Dynasty, about 30% of the chain was silk. And there is a romantic legend about the discovery of the silk. You can see this romantic legend. Okay. It dates back to Emperor Huang region in the 13th century BC. Legend has it that once there lived a father with his daughter, uh, they had a magical horse, which could not only fly, but also understand human language. One day the father went out and did not come back for uh, quite some time. The daughter made a promise. If the horse could find her father, uh, she would marry it. Finally, the horse came back with her father, but her father was shocked at her daughter's promise. Uh, unwilling to marry his daughter to an animal, he killed the innocent horse. And then a miracle happened. The horse skin 
flew away carrying the girl. And they flew and flew. And at last, they stopped on a tree. The moment the girl touched the tree, she turned into a silkworm. Uh, every day, she wept long and thin silken chant. And the silk symbolized her tears of sadness at missing her father. Okay, this is one legend about the uh, silk. And uh, another less romantic but more convincing explanation uh, about the origin of the Chinese uh, the silk is that uh, some uh, some ancient Chinese woman led by Huang Di's wife we call Lei Zu find this wonderful silk by chance when they were picking fruit from trees they run a special kind of which was white but too hard to eat so they boiled the fruit in hot water but still could not eat at last they lost some patience and then began to beat it with big sticks in this way silk and silk worms were discovered and the white hard fruit was a coconut okay And the business of raising uh, silkworms and unwinding coconuts is known as silk culture or sericulture. Uh, it takes an average of 25 to 28 days from a silkworm or level to be mature enough to spin a coconut. And the farmers put leaven onto special built frames they provide support for the worms to build their protective and valuable cocon. And about 1,000 meters of silk can be unwound from one cocon. And a man's necktie needs raw silk from about 110 cocons and a women's brown, browns from uh, 630 coconuts also. Uh, and the Suzhou is uh, general, uh, Suzhou uh, in its general recogni uh, recognized home of Chinese silk, silk and the silk capital of China. And the large rank of Suzhou silk, long known for its quality and the beauty, finds a breaks market in more than 100, uh, one, uh, 100 countries and the regions around the world. Okay. Now here, I also want, want you guys to draw uh, your special attention to the Silk Road. Uh, the Silk Road was the main chain route running from Asian in Asian times. It starts from the Wei Shui Valley in the east and ended on the east coast of the uh, Mediterranean, from where it led to various places in Europe. You can see this, okay, this route. And from the Western Han Dynasty on, uh, China's silk was exported through its route to the West, and thus a close link between China and the West was formed and the cultural exchange and the friendly visits was then promoted. And the Silk Road introduced the soft and the lustrous silk of China to countries in Central Asia, West, West Asia and Europe. And along with the technology of silkworm raising, silk reeling and the weaving of the brocade and the deal to the silk trade chinese government design and the style had a great impact on the rest of the world and the, conversely government uh, governments crafts and the styles of the other countries also had a profound influence on the chinese governments And although the ancient Silk Road has lost, lost its original function 
the numerous relics along the way still attract many uh, tourists. The uh, Meng, uh, Meng, uh, Meng Gao caves in Gansu province uh, were and the two well known Asian cities in the northwest of the China, Lowland and the Gaochang, have their own distinctive uh, mysterious. So if you if you are interested in the Chinese Chinese Silk Road, you when you come to China, you can visit these two places. Okay, uh, this this both of them are full of uh, mysteries, and the low line is known uh, as a propag propag in in the sand, and the Gao Chang was built about two thousand years ago in uh to uh, Fan Depression. And the ruling of the city uh, wall can still be seen there today. And the na natural scenery around and the ethnic residents living there for many generations and the more charms to the uh, Silk Road. And another distinct, uh, distinct features is using embroidery. Uh, embroidery uh, is a traditional Chinese handicraft featuring flowers, birds, uh, sceneries or uh, on silk and, or other with colored silk chain. And the Chinese em uh, embroidery dates back to 2000 years ago. And it has distinct, distinct regional and the is that is is not aesthetic characteristics, and today silk uh, embroidery uh, is practiced nearly all over China, and there are four most famous types uh, of embroidery in China, namely, Sichuan Luo Xiu, Suzhou embroidery, Su Xiu. Hunan embroidery, Xiangxiu, and the Guangdong embroidery, Yuexiu. And the Sichuan embroidery is famous for its uh, symbolistic, Suzhou embroidery for its de uh, delicate stitches, and the Hunan embroidery for its rich colors, and the Guangdong embroidery for its complicated patterns. You can see these pictures, it's the, uh, it's the uh, wedding costumes uh, for the bride, bridegroom bride and bridegroom okay and although machines have replaced uh the human hands in many area uh fortunately the art and the crafts of embroidery have been preserved as part of china's great cultural heritage today chinese embroidery handicrafts has uh not only uh come into ordinary people's home, but also step onto the world stage. And the in, embroidery is uh, also warmly well, uh, welcomed in uh, Chinese traditional wedding row. And here, I want to show you a video about what's on Chinese uh, traditional wedding row. Maybe you guys, can have a uh, have a better understanding about the embroidery. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see the screen? Can you see the screen? Yes, Lao Yes, Lao Shi. Okay, great. Yeah, I can see this queen. Lafay, 
含义变，把我们自己的龙凤冠无偿的提供给他们去试穿。毛龙，嗰个毛龙嘅款，龙凤褂一直都是闽南地区结婚的一个婚庆礼服，刺绣在衣服上面的图案都是很吉祥的图案。长辈穿过的龙凤褂一代一代传下去，也就是把自己家族的福气也一代一代的传下去。七八十年代那个时候开始吧。大家受了香港电影文化的影响，把龙凤褂这样一件广府地区最传统的一个婚嫁礼服就带到了全国各地，甚至是全球华人。其实来我们工作室，百分之一百的人都说我老公不是做刺绣的，他看上去就是一个收账的，一个出去打架的。我跟我老公的刺绣其实有点区别，他的话会是比较粗放，我是习惯了单线，所以看上去就会相对来说要细腻一些。这样一张的话都要点上两三天，真的眼睛都点化掉。经常吵架，两天一小吵，三天一大吵，都是为了刺绣。他妥协没有啊？好像一直是我妥协了，是<笑>这个车的问题，不是买啦，阿妈排六位，之前车车到车到一度啫嘛。最厉害的一次就是那个时候，我们刚刚开始改良旧款式，我是希望它能改良成适合现在新娘穿着的一些款式。然后妈妈还有我老公会感觉，如果这样改良的话，出来以后龙凤挂不像龙凤挂，像小凤仙或者旗袍，怎么办？十几天的冷战，他还是妥协了，拼一拼，尝试一下。他们慢慢的觉得，哦，这种改良还是挺多人接受，挺能适应现代的一个市场我跟我老公的话是属于两个不同的刺绣家族，因为大家都是做这个行业的，那就共同的语言多。到我们读书的时候，我跟他还是同桌，直到十七八岁那个时候，才真正正正开始拍拖，一直走到现在。在从小的一个整个记忆里面，除了刺绣。那就还有我老公。我啦，成功啦，最快最快啦。真的真的。呢个我认识他三十年，结婚十五年，感觉好像挺长，但是回头看，其实又好像是挺短的。在将来的下半生里面。还有他，还有刺绣，那我就已经足够了。Okay, from this video, you can see that, uh, even within one, uh, one kind of embroidery, there are many styles, and the uh, the video shows many efforts the masters, uh, in making their uh embroideries. Okay. Let's continue. I I love to make one. Love to. You want to make one? You 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 can to uh you can come China to learn the techniques. Okay. I want the this, not the techniques, Lucy. You want this? Uh, you can buy. Actually, uh, uh, you know they are different uh price uh. Based on their different qualities, uh, if you want, they want to buy uh, something with higher highest quality. Maybe it, uh, maybe it can take. Uh, let me see. Uh, one hundred more than one hundred thousand 
R&B. And if, if you don't care the quality, you only want to uh, buy something to have a look. You can buy, uh, buy a costume, maybe uh, several hundreds. Okay, different price. That's, that's very good for me. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's continue. Uh, the third distinct features is using um, batik. Okay, the batik or wax printing is a traditional Chinese folk cutting crafts, uh, which combine painting and dyeing, and it presents a variety of ethnic style and is most popular among uh, the Bu uh, Yi Miao and some other ethnic minority group. And the batik uh, involves painstaking work, but follows a rather simple uh, process. First, uh, beans west uh, is melting in a bowl, and then a special braised knife is used to spread some of liquid wax onto a cotton cloth, forming pattern as it hadn't. And the cloth is immersed completely into a jet or indigo. The unwaxed cloth takes on color while patterns formed by wax do not. Then the dyed clothes bind to max the wax, leaving clothes uh, clean uh, white patterns on a blue background. And the patterns commonly see a floral geometric and a spiral design, but folk painter may also fo uh, follow the artistic inclination and uh, draw flower birds, beasts, insects, or fish. And the pattern in all cases are enchanting, simple, but with rich local flavor. And in the process of dyeing, the dye uh, penetrates fine cracks naturally formed in the uh, solidified wax, leaving hair thin uh, blue line on the undyed white design, thus adding to the charm of the fine pieces. And as the fine line differ, no two pieces of dyeing clothes are identical, even though they have bear the same pattern. Moreover, uh, special roots, leaves, or woods are used to color the material during the batik making process, each producing specific fragrance. And the batik uh, clothes can be made into garments, scarves, uh, kerchiefs, bags, tablecloths, uh, band spreading, uh, curtains, and other decorative items. And then now let's come to uh, typical Chinese costumes. The first one is Chinese tonic suit. Did you guys know who is this man? Anyone interested in Chinese history? No? Okay. Never, never mind. Uh, this, the, uh, this one is Sun Zhongshan. Okay. Uh, uh, she, 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 he is an important role in Chinese history. If you guys are interested in Yin, you can find, this is he, uh, his name, okay? You can find him, the story about him. Uh, the Chinese tonic suit was a uniform uh, that Dr. Sun Zhongshan liked to wear and also recommended to the people of the country to wear. It was customary in ancient times to change the style of the people's clothes when a new dynasty was established. And the 1911 revolution led by Sun Zhongshan uh, overthrew the Qing dynasty and founded the Republic of China. Uh, members of his Kuomintang uh, pro proposed a change on the national costume, Dr. Sun 
uh, favored the casual dress uh, pre prevalent in Guangdong province, uh, but proposed certain modifications. Uh, Dr. Sun set an example by often wearing the tonic uh, suit. It did not take long before the style became fashionable across the country. Now, some people uh, are still found wearing tonic suit for, on formal occasions. Okay. And uh, a designer worked with his design and uh, produced uh, a tonic with four pocket and uh, turn down uh, collar uh, secure with five central button. It has some specific meanings. Okay. Uh, it looks simple but uh, and tasteful and uh, give an air of respectivity. And here you can see the uh, revolutionary uh, implications. Okay. The four pocket, you can see one, two, three, four. The four pockets in the front representing the four social bonds in China, which are pre, uh, propriety, right, uh, righteousness, honest, and a sense of shame. Okay, li yi lian chi in Chinese. Four pockets are revolutionary implication. And then the five button, Okay, here, one, two, three, four, five, five button. The five button in front signify the separation of the executive power, legislative, uh, le legislative power, judicial power, examination power, and the supervisory power. Okay, and the three button in the cuff. Okay, maybe you can not see here. The three here you can see the three buttons in the cuff representing the three principles of people's principles of nation, nation, na, nationalism, uh, principle of democracy, and the principles of people's li livelihood. In Chinese, we call it Samin Zhu Yi. Okay. Uh, Ming Zhu, Ming Zhu, uh, Ming Shen. Okay. And there's no slit in the back, which represents the uh, righteous cause of the peaceful uh, reunification of China. Okay, it's full of revolutionary implication. And this one, uh, Chong Sang, uh, also we call it Qi Pao. Qi Pao is a classic, a classic jazz for Chinese women. Uh, with the elaborate elegance uh, of traditional Chinese style. And it enjoys uh, a growing popularity in the world of fashion. And the word uh, Chongshan simply means long dress. Uh, it, in it entered the English vocabulary from the dialects of Chinese Guangdong province, Cantonese. And in other parts of China, include Beijing. However, it, it's known as Qi Pao. Okay. And when the early Qing rulers came to power, they uh, organized certain people, mainly the Manchus, under different banners, Qi, okay, and called them banner people, Qi Ren, okay, and which they then became loosely the name of Manzu. The Manzu woman's normal long grow likewise came to be called Qi Pao or banner costume. Although the 1911th revolution toppled the rule, rule of the Qing dynasty, the female costumes survived uh, the political change and with later improvement, has became the traditional costume for Chinese women. Uh, Qi Pao is, in, is early and comfortable to wear, uh, snugly fitting the figures of Chinese females. And uh, its neckline uh, is high, collar uh, clothes, and the, its sleeves may be short, medium, 
um, or four lanes, depending on the seasons, on the various tastes. You can see this picture is the short style, okay? And the costume is buttoned on the right uh, side with a loom uh, bodice, a fitted waist, and a side slashed to the hand, and all of which combine to set off the beauty of the female figure. And uh, uh, Chong, uh, Chong San is simple to make and needs minimal fabric, for there is no accessory like belt, scarves, uh, sashes, or frills. It can be made with different fabrics, and the women are worn in various lengths on either occasion or official uh, occasions. It creates an impression of the simplicity and the elegance. So for this reason, women not only from China, but also from some foreign countries are attracted by the uh, qi pao. And though some moving stars have been keen on wearing qi pao, which in turn has increased the popularity of the costume. And you can see this picture. Uh, if you guys have, have went to the Songjiang campus, you can know it's taken, and this picture is taken in Songjiang campus. And uh, all these uh, foreign, uh, foreigners are our students. Uh, we arrange uh, uh, we arrange an activities uh, uh, of qi pao, okay, and you can uh, with our uh, school of uh, textile and fashion engineering, the school, okay, and they wear uh, qi pao. You can see different style of qi pao. They do like it, okay. Maybe when you come to China. We can also arrange uh, some activities like this. Okay. And the Chongshan Qi Pao is a fashion style favored by Chinese field uh, directors. Uh, at the beginning of the 21st century, Wang Jiawei, known internationally as uh, Wang Kai Wei directed the film in the moon for love, in which the hearing wears 26 uh, chong sans. And these chong sans of graceful colors and the designers, the designs refined and elegant have provided a chance for the world audience to appreciate uh, the charm of Chinese women in chong shan. And the beauty of Chongshan is implicate and delicate, vibrant yet reserved, uh, dignified yet natural. It takes a uh, full cons uh, consideration of the characteristics of Chinese women's figures uh, using different kinds of materials, colors, and styles to um, best discipline the graceful uh, to 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 display display their grace and the dignity, okay, and the Chong San has changed people's idea about the Chinese clothes being conservative, uh, and has been gaining great uh, acclaim in the international community. And uh, some students may ask me that do Chinese still wear the Chong San or Qi Pao? Uh, let me use this video to answer the question. Okay. Take a moment. Oh, sorry. Wait a moment. Uh, you Can you guys see the screen? Yes, Lord. Yes, The Tung San or Chi Pao, a traditional Chinese women's dress, had first appeared in China in the 1920s. The nationalist government under the Kuomintang Tang once regarded it as a national dress representing the image of Chinese women. But what has happened in the past 100 years? They still wear the Tung San today, but the 40 years of the foreign women came up. 
1950, the people of the Republic of China just found it. They regarded the chum sum as luxurious and costly clothing, so it was ignored and even criticized. But it's a change after China launches with a home melting melt policy, with the country's economy and culture gradually recovering. The unique oriental design of the chum sum became popular all over again. In 1984, the State Council of China designated it as the official dress of female diplomats. The style became more popular during the Beijing Asia Games held in 1990. The 22nd APEC Economic Leaders Meeting in Beijing over four years ago, the Chinese government chose the Chongsong as the official dress for the first ladies of participant countries. The Chongsong has also appeared in cultural events. At the Oscar Award ceremony in 1990, the Pope came in and studied the films in the Red Chongsong in the Chinese movie from the movie Tobo, released in 2000, the heroine wore 22 different types of chunks. 40 years of reform and opening up have seen great changes in the living standards of Chinese people and their way of consumption. Statistics show that in July 2017, Chinese consumers have bought a total of 130,000 chunks on the online shopping platform, Zima, by the way. 33.72 million RMB in total. On this platform, there are 849 shops selling over 23,000 types of chunks on. If you buy a ton chunks on for a minute, it will take you 16 full days to do every one of them. In the past 30 years, China has witnessed fast development of the economy and culture. Chunks on, the symbol of Chinese dresses in the past, has now appeared in the wardrobe of Chinese homes. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Okay, and here are two more pictures about Chongsan. Beautiful, very beautiful, right? Different styles. Okay. Okay, now let's come to the second typical Chinese costumes. Uh, uh, this one is called Tang Zhuang, okay, Tang costume. At the end of the 20th century, the Tang costume, uh, or we can see Chinese style coat, became uh, entered the mainstream. And like uh, Chong San, the Tang costume is another representative of Chinese national uh, costumes. And it got its name not just because its designers got inspiration from the costume of Tang Dynasty, but also because the Tang Dynasty was a prosperous period in Chinese history. Uh, so clothes that embody the Chinese flavor are therefore co collectively referred to the Tang costume. And the famous international designers set their sights on China and its 5,000 plus years of civilization and fashion. The China's impact and the China's impact on the global fashion industry was realized during the Nice Asian Pacific, uh, Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit we call IMPACT, okay, in October 2001. And uh, uh, when all the heads of the members' nation won the Tang costume, you can see this picture, okay. And the Tang style appeared, uh, apparel has four main elements. First, uh, it's usually from the button uh, through most of a women's costume uh, are buttoned on the left, a design not only displaying the characteristic of Chinese style, but a look uh, quite graceful. And the second, it also, it always has a, a vertical uh, collar, which set off the various uh, demeanor. And the third, it has no seams, but the sleeves uh, and the main part of the costume. And the fourth, it used handmade stylish clothes buttons. Okay, you can see this all made, all made by hand. 
and the design designs the source of the uh, uh, vivacity of the Tang Dynasty apparel present a strong national flavor. And this design in round shape usually feature finny, plum, orchid, bamboo, and uh, some other things to symbolize fortune, uh, dignity, and uh, purity, or feature Chinese characters meaning blessing, uh, possession, longevity, or double happiness. And today, Chinese people loved to wear Tang style clothing on happy occasion uh, during a uh, festival vision for blessing and happiness. And the Tang uh, style attire is also flavored by film uh, director. Okay. This one. Okay, maybe we can take uh, 15 minutes re uh, break and then we can come back to continue this part, okay? Okay, 老师. 好的, 15分钟后见, 